I get a lot of questions about the differences between spinal shock, neurogenic shock, and autonomic dysreflexia. So I'm gonna take a brief couple of minutes to talk to you about the difference. I wrote them on three different little boards and then I have a separate little board to kind of show you all three together. So spinal shock. What I want you to get from this is as soon as you start to have a disruption of the central nervous system with a spinal cord injury, your sympathetic and your parasympathetic activity get all screwed up. So what happens is with spinal shock, your sympathetic activity is kind of shut down and your parasympathetic activity runs wild. So if you think about parasympathetic activity, what is that? So what's the difference between sympathetic and parasympathetic? Hopefully you're saying everything is, is kind of relaxing with parasympathetic because it's kind of calming things down. So if you don't have that counterbalance with the sympathetic activity to kind of equalize things out, keep you in homeostasis, when you get rid of that, everything slows down and calms down way too much. So you have a loss of reflexes, you get flaccid paralysis, your heart rate goes down, your blood pressure goes down, your bladder stops working, your bowels stop working, you stop sweating, you stop having, having vasomotor tone, you stop being able to feel anything, all below the level of the injury. So spinal shock is significant and deadly if you don't keep control of those vital signs. So it's very unique to where the central nervous system gets disrupted, the parasympathetic takes over, everything is down, 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 down. The difference between that and neurogenic shock is neurogenic shock is more on the long, along the lines of the cardiovascular system. So yes, you are going into shock and you're going into shock with a little bit different presentation than normal shock. Normal shock for let's say hemorrhagic um, shock or cardiogenic shock, your blood pressure goes down normally your heart rate will go up. This is different. This is dealing with the central nervous system. And so it's a little bit different presentation to where you have a decrease in your heart rate and a decrease in your blood pressure. Now with neurogenic shock, you're still probably gonna have weakness and sensory loss, but that's more related to the actual injury itself, not because of the disruption of the central nervous system like spinal shock very difficult sometimes to determine if the patient's in spinal shock or neurogenic shock, but the main difference is with the spinal shock, you're going to have more flaccid paralysis and loss of reflexes. And I'll return back to that in a minute. So different than the other shocks that you've learned about, spinal shock, neurogenic shock have low blood pressure and low heart rate. Those are usually immediately after onset of the injury. Up to a year later, you can have an occurrence of autonomic dysreflexia. Now think autonomic, autonomic nervous system. Dysreflexia, dys at the beginning of a word means is not doing it properly. So reflexes, reflexia, that's not, there's something going wrong with a reflex response with an autonomic nervous system. So normally speaking, when we get pinched, you can feel pain. You tell somebody to stop it. Internally, you get a little bit of a fight or flight going on with that sympathetic activity where your heart rate and your blood pressure go up because it hurts. So when they stop pinching you, that calms down because the pain response is gone. Well, if you can't feel the pain, you can't tell somebody to stop it or you can't tell someone that you're in pain because you don't feel it. But internally, you still have a pain response, but it's a dysreflexic response. So with autonomic dysreflexia, your blood pressure goes up and your heart rate goes down, which is different than the normal pain response. And with that also, you get a lot of potentially vision changes, really bad headache, flushing. And that's related to the pain that's happening, usually in abdominal nature. So a bladder that's distended, um, a fecal impaction. And there's a lot of other 
causes of it. But if you can get in your mind, they cannot feel that pain to alleviate it. Internally, there's a pain response, but it's a dysreflexic response. So the blood pressure goes up. And I mean like up, up to where you could start stroking out. And it's very deadly. You need to catch it. As soon as you start seeing some of these dysreflexic responses, you need to find out what the pain is. Do a lot of investigating, do a lot of assessing, find that stimulus, get rid of that stimulus, and hopefully that patient's blood pressure and heart rate will stabilize. If not, you can give some medications, but you still need to be really careful because eventually the body is going to start to stabilize. And then if you gave any meds, you could have that opposite effect of being too low if you were trying to lower that blood pressure with some like beta blockers or something. So to have them all together on one chart, it's a little bit small. I'll show it to you. The big thing here, the shocks are going to have low blood pressure and low heart rate. Spinal shock is going to be no reflexes below the level of the injury, flaccid paralysis. Neurogenic shock generally doesn't have that. The injury itself to the spinal cord is going to cause the weakness and whatever. But your autonomic dysreflexia is related to pain, a pain stimulus with a dysreflexic response. So the blood pressure skyrockets, the heart rate goes down. And because your blood pressure is going up so high, you get the headaches, you get some flushing, um, you need to figure out what's causing that pain. So hopefully having these side by side and talking about them in this way helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a good one, guys.